Yes, good morning. Let us uh, consider a third lecture uh, for this um, mini course on computational metallurgy, which uh, happens to be a sort of digression because I've just been uh, reading uh, a published that a paper which has been published just yesterday. And I think it could be a good uh, um, example of application of computational metallurgy. And I believe it's worth to do it. Okay. Well, uh, precisely the paper is this one. Strong ductile high temperature soft magnets to Wilman Stetten precipitates. Um, it's in, it is an open paper, uh, just published yesterday, December the 9th. And uh, it is a sort of very interesting paper, uh, specifically on the development of new materials for soft magnets. What we would like to consider here, um, here is basically one figure of the paper. I wouldn't go into details, but you can read fully the paper. So let us consider the um, simulation of the phase fraction in moles. Uh, they have been using thermocalc. I have not found precisely the indication about which kind of database they've been using, but never mind. It is just an exercise. And in any case, I do appreciate the paper and the approach. And uh, it's from a very well known uh, research group. Professor Dick Rabbit is one of the best experts in metallurgy nowadays. It's, uh, it's uh, amazing the, the, the many things they do. So about uh, this one, uh, let us go. We would like to reproduce uh, figure one, um, phase fraction, and possibly um, they have been using a two uh, composition. So let us go back to the paper and examine where the specific composition is because I've already, so they have uh, been using uh, two compositions, all based on uh, iron, cobalt, nickel, and tantalum. Um, we will be using um, uh, molar fractions in our simulation and well, you see a lot of things uh, that not properly belong into to, um, to computational metallurgy. So let us go the section, let us go reading the section uh, about this specific alloy. So an ingot, one kilogram weight, nominal composition, let me check if I am correct. Iron 35, cobalt 30, nickel 30, tantalum 5. And then slight variations about it. So the one that I have uh, written down could be slightly different, but never mind. Or we can go just straight on on this composition. So let me write it into alphabetical order because I need to do well. Uh, I would use uh, entire numbers. So cobalt thirty, um, iron thirty-five, nickel thirty and tantalum five. Blah, 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 blah. 
they have been uh, using this one. Um, and then another composition, which is not that different, but uh, a minor weight, just 50 grams. So it is cobalt 31, uh, iron 39, and uh, nickel 28 and talon 2. Well, this is magnetic measuring supplementary materials is over or additional information. Let me check. Supplementary information. Okay, that's pretty enough. This is interesting because uh, this is the standard way of many, many years ago, I was working in this cement and carbides industry and we've been using metal pro quality checking by uh, getting the grain size and the coercitivity by measuring it was tanks and cobalt alloys, but it was too many years ago in the previous century. So let us go in the current century and go into Pandat. And let me check which kind of uh, simulations I have already been doing, or maybe uh, we do another one. So uh, we will use uh, this one. I'm using uh, the full version of uh, of uh, Pandat, with, uh, which is Panned that uh, some five years ago, and I'm using a specific the a specific database which is for iron alloys. So it is not for multi-component alloys, like we have seen in lecture one and two. But I believe it's also interesting to see the behavior of this uh, material. And maybe if someone would like to give more information, but we need to have multi-component. Uh, database that we don't have for for the moment as we for for open mixture okay so uh, let us go into line calculation um, and modify the one that i so i've already been selecting the database and they have already been selecting the components and now i need to input the first composition that I mentioned to you. So, so the one, the 50 kilograms uh, uh, batch. So it is cobalt 30, um, iron 35, nickel 30, and tantalum 5. And then we will just copy the other data with this command, but we should Okay. While uh, Panda is doing its calculation, I would go back to the paper and um, go back to the paper there. And considering this figure, maybe it's better to, to go into the original um, online paper, which normally has bigger figures. So we need to reproduce this one. Uh, again, 35, 35, or 35 seems the, the right one. Okay. <laughs> this is what Yes, their own uh, result using thermocat. We are using Pandat, and let us so we the the calculations now have been done, and 
label, legend, and this is our so so what 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 it is possible to see so black liquid here liquid is in green but is of course we have some um, um, liquidus temperature around uh, 1500 degrees no. so this is the liquidus this is the solidus of course in um, well then we have the fcc phase in red it's pretty close to this and then here we have in uh, what is it? light blue there light blue there there could be two phases i should try to or you should expand this one and what i want to do with you before closing this short first uh, sunday lecture it's um, the child and the level rule solidification so with the basically the same composition so not this one 30 35 30 and 5 we go into shell solidification and we click with the right mouse and here and we see which is the phase which is precipitating or solidifying in this case. So this is behavior of the of the solidification with child, and then we go into the level rule. And we do the same game, and we see as expected differences. So, level rule is assuming solidification with the FCC, while child, of course, is. A, uh, involving other phases in solidification. What we have learned from this uh, uh, quick talk is that we can make line calculation um, in order to get uh, phases. I would say like uh, this specific uh, workspace, on the web as usual with the name of uh, the first uh, author who is Liu Liu Han. Uh, the last author is Professor Birnabe and I believe the, the group is important and they have a lot of people working and nice, nice things producing. This one is a very important uh, topic. I would underline just this line. But what we are uh, doing, we are doing by simple calculations, what it is possible to uh, forecast, I would say. Of course, if you have more complex uh, multi-component uh, databases, then you can um, assume uh, that you are in, in the right way. We have been using a database which is basically useful for the stills, but uh, my impression, and I think it would be nice to have your feedback, is that we are not that far from uh, uh, a phase analysis in temperature that we can have 
uh, just so I should save before forgetting it file so I say the workspace new new hum zero two because I've already produced another one this morning and I will pack it and then just for let us uh, close it um, and do like I'm doing it, compress it, find it in my desktop, which is the most difficult task. So um, this is a condition. Okay, it's over there. So I, we have this one, and so you will have also the graphs and so on. You would use the, the um, so we will compress the file. <coughs> we have compressed it there. Now we should put into the internet. and on the mini course materials. Mm. Mm, and uh, copy the zip file there. allow you to read it and check whether it is really available on the web. Seems yes. So if we want, but it should not be necessary because the paper is over there, but just for my memory possibly. We put the paper there and and we copy it there. But it is an open paper, so it's normally not necessary and not recommending as well. And then I would copy it for my memory what we are saying. And well, uh, the original idea today was not speaking about uh, this uh, paper, but uh, about an older, much older, I would say, uh, methodology, which it was in a way pre calfa as long as we are speaking about two topics for the moment. One is I entropy or multi-component uh, alloys based on uh, iron. And the first paper that we've been reading was instead on magnesium alloys. And I found this uh, paper, which is in line of uh, the Midema model calculations by, uh, unfortunately, Midema is not any longer with us, but with the original developers, which which are from uh, Delft University, I would say Boom, but maybe I'm wrong. And I would say De Boer as well. And they've been developed uh, this model, which is so important for checking and comparing experimental data on an empirical basis. Of course, nowadays uh, there is, um, we have seen in the first um, paper, there is a lot of um, ab initio methodologies to develop uh, those things. But uh, what I want 
to show you this is this approach is not that complex and uh, anyone with a with a basic uh, software like uh, even excel may may do the the calculations uh, uh, report this is actually is not calculations by the model but uh, getting the, the data from the paper because i want to check if i have time aluminum and calcium from the um, um, ft and uh, ab initio methodology and also experimental works which are inside the paper somewhere here somewhere here no here all the data and and all the that, that i needed there save you know i'm not a robot and put directly no and save it directly save it directly come on there hope it is there no never mind the paper is over there we would we will check whether there is any kind of mistakes strange because i'm downloading from there enough papers Well, it's not the right time to do that. So, uh, in any case, I would work out uh, this one possibly on um, on the next uh, talk that we have. I would stop there because it doesn't seem uh, I am in the best conditions to to explore the situation. And so let us interrupt it, close this one, and go and go to say, have a nice Sunday to you, and just stop it. Have a nice day, and a nice weekend as well.